I'm Dean Safola, and this is the Azure Academy. So you're thinking of bringing a new workload into the cloud. Maybe that's a Cosmos database or a Kubernetes cluster, Azure Virtual Desktop or some web applications. Whatever it is, the Azure Pricing Calculator will help you understand what the projected costs of those resources will be so you not only know what to expect but can plan for scale and growth over time. Now the pricing calculator has been around for quite a while, but I still get questions on a regular basis about how do I know how much stuff costs? So it starts off right here where you can pick a particular resource or set of resources that you want to combine together into a solution. And you can do that by either clicking through the menu here or just typing things in. For example here, I'll add AKS and a storage account. Then when you scroll down, you can see all the parameters around AKS, so you can tweak it to how you plan on doing your deployment to get the projected cost. And the same thing, of course, for the storage account or any other kind of resources. You can bundle all of that together into a cost estimate and save that as a scenario down here at the bottom by clicking export. So that's a decent overview. Let's zoom in on one particular solution. There's been some recent improvements to Azure Virtual Desktop's section of the pricing calculator. So let's type that in and then click the box to add it. So the cost around virtual desktop comes from a lot of different components. And the one thing that is not included in this list are the user license cost. Okay, that's technically not an Azure related thing. So those are handled separately from the calculator at this time. But our costs here are gonna come from our virtual machines, networks and firewalls, and the storage options that we need. And that would include your virtual machines disks as well as whatever storage you're using for your FS Logix or MSIX app attach. So starting off at the top, you always have to select the region that you're working with because some regions have some different pricing. In this case, East US, and then the type of host pool you want and your options of course are pooled and personal. Now for my scenario configuration, I'll be using multi-session and then we have the type of workload. This is defined in the Azure documentation and for what I need just for general office workers, I'll pick a medium workload. Then we have the number of users because the calculator now will break down your cost into the individual users over the life of the solution. And just to keep the math easy for this quick video, I'll make 100 users and I'll have them work an average of 40 hours a week. So that'll be 160 hours a month. So that'll finish out the virtual desktop configuration. Next on the list is picking out our virtual machine. And this is where the lion's share of the cost comes from. First, we have the category. That's the type of VM that we have. And you can pick from any one of the families here from the compute and general purpose optimized to the GPU or storage optimized. So it all depends on knowing the kind of workload that your environment needs. In this case, I'm worried about just general office users. So I'll pick general purpose. Then we have the instance series. Now these are the particular VM SKUs that fall under the category that I've selected. And since I'm doing general purpose, we'll take the DSV4 series. And then under the instances box, that now limits my choice of virtual machine. And of course, since this is just an estimate, you can always go back and change it and see what happens if you pick a different kind of virtual machine, then maybe you'll land on some better pricing. So for my 100 users, we're gonna start with virtual machines that have eight cores and 32 gigs of RAM. And when you select that, that changes the breakdown over there on the left. You could do this entire project with one virtual machine that was running for 570 hours, and that wouldn't necessarily be recommended just for high availability's sake. So the other way you could break it down is with six virtual machines that each run for 160 hours. And of course there's more hours than that in a month. So you're planning here to turn the VMs off when they're not needed. Then we have the savings options. The default, of course, being pay as you go, that's standard monthly pricing, but you could also choose to use Azure reserved instances in one or three year increments. And you can play with the pricing there to see what makes the most sense for you. Next, we have the storage section, and this is for your operating system disk here. So we do want a premium SSD since we're having a bunch of users on the same machine. As to the size of the disk, this is gonna depend on if you're using FS Logics as VHD locations or cloud cache. If it's cloud cache, you will want a more high performance disk. 
but that also goes into how many users you have on each individual virtual machine. So you'll need to check the I.O. limits of each one of the disks to see which is right for you. But starting off here with a P10 is certainly a good place to begin. And there are six disks currently selected because we have six virtual machines. Next, we have our file storage, and this is for FSLogix user profiles. And it's first selected here on premium Azure files, but you can also choose to look at NetApp files pricing as well. And there's two different things you have to think about, data at rest and then snapshots, which are your backups. So data at rest is how much total space do you need in that Azure file storage? And then we have the snapshots. This is the backup through Azure Backup or even snapshots within the storage account if you wanna manage it yourself. And these are incremental snapshots. Tomorrow you add 300 gigabytes of storage. Your next snapshot will be 300 gigabytes because it's all the changes that were made since the last snapshot. Now as to how much data is that, well, that will depend on how much data you grow over time. And it also depends on how long you plan on keeping that data. So this one, you're going to have to take your best guess. Then we have bandwidth, and this relates to your networking. And there's two things to think about. Traffic inside Azure going from region to region and traffic leaving Azure, which is called egress. As far as region to region traffic, you only really need to worry about this if your resources span multiple regions. For example, if your domain controllers are in West Europe, but your virtual machines are in East US. Okay, and that would probably create some added latency into your environment as well, so it's always best to keep things as close together as possible. Then you should have very few, if any, interregional charges. As for egress, that's a different story. See, the very nature of virtual desktop is that we're communicating from our VMs in the cloud out to your client wherever they are. So now the question is, how will you get that traffic to them? And you've got two choices to route it, through the Microsoft Global Network or the public internet. And that means that the data will leave your session host and ride the Microsoft Network as far as it can, and then at the last second, leave the Microsoft Network through the public internet to your client endpoint. Now that means that routing is a little more efficient, so latency should be better and more predictable, but that does come at some increased cost. And finally, we have the cost per user breakdown. This takes all the information up above that we've already discussed and then gives you the actual cost per individual user. You can see from the total breakdown across your virtual machine, disks, Azure file storage, and network bandwidth that your user will cost on average $7.84. And you can get that up and running really fast using the new WVD Quick Start, which I just did a video on, and you can go check it out right over there. Just one more way that the solution keeps on evolving. And we'll, of course, have all the latest here at the Azure Academy. So be sure that you're subscribed and you click like if this was a help to you. Happy learning.